Hi guys, Ren here and welcome to the workshop. Today I'll be talking about my new Rowell Rapid CLX wheels as I have promised in earlier videos and yeah, there have been a lot of questions regarding them. So let's just get on. So what is special about these wheels? It's Rowell's new release. Uh, I had Rowell CLX 64 before but not many other Rowell wheels apart from maybe the 3 to one disc that I had both in disc and rim brake variant. And the CLX64s were pretty decent wheels, uh, very fast but not very stable uh, or uh, very light. Uh, so yeah, compared to other, other brands like Envis for example, they are not especially remarkable. That however changes quite a lot with the repeats. And here is why. Uh, so let's start with what they are in the first place. Um, it's an aero wheel set designed for road racing. So it's kind of a mid-depth affair. Uh, the front is 50 millimeters deep. The rear is 61 millimeters deep. So yeah, I would suspect taken from MB's uh, design book. They used completely different profiles front and rear to match the required uh, characteristics and uh, unlike I would say 99% of today's offerings these wheels are not tubeless ready why is that I heard one comment that um, they couldn't put in the effort uh, of making them tubeless well that's not really the case uh, you see when you install a wheel that's designed to be tubeless it has to be strong enough uh, to deal with the added uh, compressive forces from the tight, uh, or should I say airtight, tubeless bead. And this kind of reinforcement adds weight. And that's uh, something that Roval and yeah, Specialized wanted to get rid of. So the wheels they design are clincher only. Uh, is that a problem? Mm, or a problem for me per se? Well the thing is I'm a big fan of tubeless tires. Uh, on my time trial bike I really wouldn't want to go without tubeless because the course of speeds uh, set up tubeless that are on there are the fastest you can get. Uh, so for time trialing the choice is obvious. For road tires, however, uh, the difference is not so clear cut. Uh, the thing is there are a couple of good options uh, in terms of tubeless tires. There's the Schwalbe Pro One, uh, TLE, the Conti GP5000, although not my favorite, it's very fast and very, uh, very hardy. Uh, and then there are others recently launched from Michelin, from Pirelli. Uh, all good options, uh, but the thing is, if you start with specialized has in their arsenal, should I say, which is the turbo cotton that I have here, uh, it's a super supple tire, uh, clincher tire, or maybe you could say open tubular because it has non vulcanized um, sidewalls, it has a very good compound. So it's very fast running as well. If you pair this with the latex in a tube, um, it's actually quite a bit faster than road tubeless tires. Of course, it's not faster than course speed setup tubeless, but actually it's quite close. And also it's very grippy. It's, um, I would say, until, uh, well, my current experiences, it's fairly puncture resistant as well. I wouldn't say it's especially hard wearing because it's a racing tire, but we'll see about that later on. Anyway, if you take all these considerations, of course you use the sealant uh, provided puncture protection, but that hasn't been an issue so far. Anyway, if you choose based on performance and specs, then omitting tubeless uh, doesn't seem like a bad idea anymore. And yeah, at first I was very skeptical about not being or not having tubeless, but then if you consider these factors, 
it's no longer an issue. And then you have one more consideration because as I said, uh, removing the requirements for tubeless means less weight. And uh, if you look at other options from different brands, uh, their real weights are nothing remarkable, but then you look at these rowels and their depth and width also and If you consider they only weigh 1400 grams for the pair That's extremely extremely light uh, For example, if it takes MV's 3.4 you get the same weight uh, So yeah, there's a remarkable difference in weight and although weight is as we know now not such a crucial factor in in bicycle dynamics it's still uh, pretty important um, some say would say oh sorry some would say that because it's rolling weight or rotating weight it's more important well studies have proven it's not more important but if you use these wheels you can be aero and light something they want to achieve with their wench and tarmac frames also the shiv this is the direction where they're going and yeah, it just works. So in that aspect, I'm very happy with how these wheels are. My bike like this, a fully kitted out weighs 7.2 kilos and it's a full on aero bike with full on aero wheels and everything you need for racing. So chain catcher, power meter, bottle cages, computer mount, etc. So that's just very nice. Uh, then if you look at the CLX64 that came before, uh, the kink in that wheelset's armor was uh, stability in the crosswinds. Mm, if you get something like the MV56 or the 78, those are rock solid wheelsets, wasn't the case with the 64. Now the repeats are very stable, but I wouldn't say quite as stable as the MVs, but really, really good enough to ride them in any conditions. Another thing uh, that isn't particularly ideal, I would say, about these are the hubs. Now, there's a strange phenomenon appearing in these hubs and uh, it hasn't been solved before with the, with the 64s and hasn't been solved uh, now with the repeats. Is this strange binding that you get with the bearings. You take these wheels, uh, put them in a bike when they're new, ride them a little bit, and they're very smooth. Uh, but then suddenly, uh, the bearings start to lock up, but not in the way that they're seizing up, but in a similar fashion if you were to overly preload uh, a headset or, or a crankset. Then if you remove the axle, install everything, um, Again, it, the problem disappears without even touching the bearings in terms of servicing them. And it's a weird thing, it happened uh, on my front already, it happened on the CL CLX64 that I had, and it happened twice already on my disc. So this is a bit of a weird thing that happens with these aerobal hubs, but it can be easily solved in a matter of 10 minutes, but yeah, it's worth keeping an eye on so you don't destroy your bearings. Mm, also, a notable fact is these no longer have ceramic speed bearings in them. Yeah, which uh, themselves are extremely durable, almost indestructible. So that's a bit of a shame uh, from a long-term perspective. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, more or less a uh, thing about the hubs. It also has the Ratchet EXP free hub at the back, so the new one from DT Swiss. Um, what can I say about it? It's simpler, it's lighter than before, so that's nice, but it's obnoxiously loud. Uh, that's not uh, my favorite feature. Yeah, but otherwise, a uh, good system, nevertheless. Is it a change between different types of free hubs also? Um, yeah, so apart from the noise, that's uh, that's fine. Uh, then if you look at other features, well, the hubs are center lock, of course, also arrow shaped. So yeah, that's not something you can see elsewhere. That's a nice thing. 
in my opinion. The interesting fact is that the front wheel only has 18 spokes, so no cross lacing, uh, but radial instead on the non-brake side or the drive side, sh should I say. That's also a nice feature and reduces weight without sacrificing stiffness because these really, really are very lively and track very well. Also, they nicely match the 26 mil tires. Uh, these are the ones that, are that they are designed for. So excellent cornering and acceleration. Braking, of course, taken care of by the discs. And then uh, for me, the elephant in the room, the Domenge in particular, was brake rub with different kinds of wheel sets. So uh, it happens that the 52 and the 49 Wenge uh, were quite prone to brake rub with the CLX 64s. Now, I would believe this is due to the flex in the in the axle of the of the DT style hubs because they rely on end caps. And uh, the CLX 64 was was super flexy. I got uh, tons of brake rub when riding up the saddle. So that was uh, that was not ideal. Then I went to carbon TI hubs with a solid axle that almost uh, made that problem disappear, but not co not completely. Same thing with Chris King, which also have a solid axle. Uh, the problem never truly went away, but it got much better. And I was extremely surprised to see that when I put in the rapid CLXs. Uh, the flex, uh, or I won't say the flex, but the rub disappeared completely, which is surprising because although the hub has been updated, it still uses uh, end caps. So yeah, that was a nice surprise. Apart from the right feel, uh, I forgot to mention that yeah, due to the nature of these tires and having non-vulcanized sidewalls, they're extremely supple as well. So that's uh, yeah, they ride beautifully. Mm, and uh, what else to say? I would also like to touch on the point of durability. Now, I'm sure you're aware that uh, because of the design of these wheels, the front rim got extremely wide. That's uh, up to 35 mil. And uh, that's very good for aerodynamics, apparently, but it's uh, it has a bit of a drawback. Let me just illustrate that. Yeah, here it is. So, uh, it's very seldom that I hit potholes or, or rocks or anything like that. Uh, and, but it happens, of course, occasionally, even if... if you're very careful and uh, the Nationals Road Race actually had some cobbled sectors in it and some of those were quite rough. Now the thing is it's not normally a problem even if you well bottom out a tire but this rim is so deep or not really deep so wide that if you bottom out the tire it just hits the ground doesn't normally happen but it does with this one so yeah I would say that's kind of an inevitable thing unless you run a tire that's wider than the rim which in this case would be pretty hard because the rim is 35 millimeters wide uh, yeah but, but it's not a big deal really it's just cosmetic and if you see, hit something uh, so hard that you would actually damage the rim then yeah that would be the least of your concerns anyway and one thing I have added is a Silka speed shield for the valve a couple of you have been asking about this it's just for a slight reduction in drag around the valve uh, it's a kind of a marginal gain and also one thing I'd like to touch on is the finish of, of the rims themselves. So these decals are actually uh, black over, so you can't change them. 
or replace them easily at least so that's a bit surprising although if i remember correctly the robot have always done this it's not like on mvs uh, so that's one thing and the second thing is that this satin finish that they have on the rims now uh, it's actually not so hard wearing as on the mvs for example because as you see i use these kind of bike stands and normally there's no damage at all if you're careful but here on the rear wheel there are tiny tiny marks from the stand i believe or from transport in general that haven't happened to me before and i'm quite careful about well when taking care of my equipment but it happened it can probably be polished out or taken out but yeah the surface is not so hardy as with other rims so that might be a bit of a minus to the durability side of things yeah so uh just to sum things up a uh, beautiful high performance wheel set fast stable and very very light compared to what it is so a good choice uh, for performance minded riders probably not uh, for the everyday uh, training rig or commuter or the bike that's using bad conditions on bad roads etc uh, yeah very very nice indeed surprisingly good mm, but not perfect that's what i would say about these wheels also they're priced relatively competitively compared to other brands so good choice all around okay so that's all i have to say for now about the rapids i was thinking about getting the alpinists as well but we'll see later on if you'd like to know more about the equipment uh, that I work on and use myself, then don't forget to tune into the channel later on and subscribe. That's all for the day. Thanks for watching and see you next time.